I'm working on a series of videos to walk you through the process of finding and landing your first web design clients. And the value of these clients will be about $5,000 per year. It's gonna be monthly recurring revenue that stacks up to about $5,000 per year. And we're gonna go through everything from start to finish, like what metrics to look for in good clients, how do you actually find their contact information so that you actually have leads, what do you say when you reach out, what should the offer be, what services do you include, pricing, onboarding, everything from start to finish so that you can start landing some clients as fast as possible. And I thought about waiting until I had all of the videos recorded and just release them all at once because I kind of get excited about it. But then I thought, well, that's gonna take me a while to do and all of this stuff sort of stacks on itself and you can start with the things that we're gonna talk about today. Today, we're gonna talk about identifying good clients and finding their contact information. So basically, how do you get the leads? We're gonna cover that in this video today. And you could be working on that while I'm working on the rest of the videos and then we can kind of walk through the whole process together if that sounds like fun to you. So if that sounds cool, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future videos. But let's talk about finding leads for today. And we're gonna be looking at like an entry level niche for this entry level solution. And there's this weird sort of inverse relationship between the size of the niche and the value of the solution. Because the broader the niche, the lower the value for the solution, because your solution can really only cover the lowest common denominator that kind of applies to the entire niche. Let me give you an example. Like if you were to fo focus down further, like say you wanted to focus on like health and wellness businesses, then you might say, well, I need an online client portal. We have to get a lead magnet to nurture the leads. You know, we might need a patient intake forms with like HIPAA compliant patient intake forms. But like if you're working with an HVAC business, they don't need any of that stuff. And so if you don't know up front who your audience is, your solution ends up being sort of like a, a more generic solution and it therefore is lower value. Whereas if it's more specific, it's gonna be more powerful and get better results for your clients, which means you can charge more. And it also builds your authority in the space, meaning you begin to differentiate yourself from a garden variety web designer that does generic work into a specialist. And that positions you in a high ticket way as well. So I put a separate workshop together. I'm gonna to put a link in the description. It's called the authority framework. And it kind of walks you through the process of establishing your authority drilling down and picking a high value niche. It's totally free. You don't even have to put your email address in to get started. There's gonna be a link in the description for that. Today, let's focus on how do you actually identify clients for an entry level solution and find these leads for free. Now the metrics that I'm gonna be looking for with regard to the clients that we're talking about in this series, it's gonna be pretty broad, but not everybody. So I'm looking for businesses that have in-person rela relationships and contact with their customers. So it's not online only coaching or e-commerce only or selling handmade jewelry on Etsy. Like I'm not looking for those types of businesses. I'm looking for either service area businesses like um, I don't know, power washers or people that build decks or something like that where they're gonna come to the client's location or they might have a physical location like a yoga studio, a salon, a med spa, chiropractors, stuff like that. So, um, so in-person relationships with clients, because that's gonna mean they qualify to have a Google business profile. And I want that to be the case because I wanna help them on Google Maps and stuff like that. That's gonna be part of our solution that we're gonna get to in a future video. But um, so that's what we're looking for, in-person relationships. I want them to have uh, some presence on social media to begin with. Like I'd like, it, I'd like it if they had a Facebook page or, or an Instagram page or something to show me that they're interested in digital marketing, but maybe they don't have a website yet. Um, and here's an interesting one. I'm looking for people that don't have email on their own domain yet. So they're using like a Gmail email address or something like that for their business, because that's gonna tell me that I can help them a lot with their digital brand. They might not even have a website yet. Um, seven or fewer employees is kind of this business size that I'm looking at. It's fine if it's just like one person, but that's kind of the overall gist of what we're going for. And the interesting thing is you can find clients that match all of this criteria with just an advanced Google search. Now, if you've never done an advanced Google search, I think you're gonna be really happily surprised at how awesome this is. Take a look, let me share my screen with you and you can see how this works. So here's how we find the leads. First, go to google.com. You can't just launch your browser because you'll probably be at like the startup page for your browser. And you actually need to go to google.com up here in the location bar. And then when you do that, you'll see down here in the bottom right corner, the settings link. So click on the settings and then go to advanced search. And this is where it's really helpful if you know your niche. So you could be doing health and fitness or spas and salons or home services or whatever. If you don't have your niche dialed in yet, don't forget to check out the authority framework down in the description and I can help you get that squared away. But we wanna type in a few keywords that describe the niche. So we're gonna to wanna to know that. Before we get to that though, I also wanna type in 
at gmail.com. And this is important for a couple reasons. One, I want to find people's email addresses. So I want to come up with search results that have an email address in it. And if they're using a Gmail uh, email address, that means they don't have email in their own domain name, which means that we can help with that. They might not even have a website yet. So this is going to help us target, like we were talking about before with that, that client persona, people that are just kind of getting started. They have social media pages, but they don't really have a website yet. And then for any of these words, these are all going to be ORed together. So you don't have to have all these words, just some. So I'm going to type stuff like HVAC, heating, maybe plumbing, uh, maybe cooling, stuff like that. And then I'm going to go to region and I'm going to zing all the way down to the United States. Let's see, I'm almost there. So I'm looking for business in the United States. And then here's where we scope it down to just one website. So I'm going to type facebook.com here because I'm looking for heating and plumbing and cooling and stuff like that. If I was looking for like spas and salons and health and fitness and stuff like that, I would type in instagram.com because they're more likely to be on Instagram than Facebook. But for this example, let's just take uh, the HVAC kind of heating, plumbing, cooling people in the United States on Facebook, click advanced search, and you get a ton of different results. So I went ahead and scraped through on my own and found a couple of examples that are really good leads just, to, just from, from this list. So don't be afraid to scroll down the page a little bit because people further down the page probably need more help than people at the top. But, um, but I found Essential Plumbing, Heating and Services and I've got their location here, phone number, email address, website to check out. So I'm gonna look into that. Then I've got these guys here, David J. Winston Company. I've got email address, website, so that's really cool. I've got another one here, the MD Super Tech people. I've got their email address, but no website. So I'm just gonna keep doing that and trying to find people that have um, at least an email address, maybe or maybe not a website, a couple of, re of reviews. Like if they have like 500 reviews and I'm probably not gonna reach out because they're probably doing a lot of their own online marketing, but you know, seven seems reasonable. These guys had eight, these guys had zero. So all of these are really good. And then what I'll do is I'll highlight all of this stuff and I'll copy the business name, the city and the state, and I'll just search for that and see if they have a Google business profile. And if you look here, this, these guys, super tech HVAC services, that is not <laughs> the business that we actually search for. These people are actually in Maryland, it looks like, and we search for people that were in Philadelphia. So it looks like the MD super tech people don't even have a Google business profile. So I would reach out to them. And then I did the same thing for David J. Winston. I Googled their business name and their location, and I did find that they had a Google business profile. They've got a few reviews going on. So when I find people that have reviews, I'll go ahead and click on the reviews, and then I'll click this newest button to see what they've got going on. And it looks like they've got a review from three days ago, but it looks like it might be an erroneous review. Like the, it, I'm happy to see that there's a response from the owner, and it looks like it's a nice person that's trying to rectify the situation. It might have been an accidental review because there's no text. It's just a three-star rating. And then before that, it's just five months. So I would 100% reach out to this person because three days ago, they got this review. Two days ago, they replied to it. So I bet you that Google reviews is going to be on the top of their mind. So, um, so I think this would be a great lead to reach out to because we've got their contact information. We, we know that they have a Google profile, but it looks like they could use some help with it. And you basically just have an unlimited supply of free leads with these advanced searches on Google. So now we want to track your leads. So all you have to do, if you don't have anything else, you can set up a Google Sheet or a spreadsheet. And we just want to track at least this information. You might want to add a little bit more, but I've got the business name, the person's name, the person's email address. You might want to put their website link or something in there too, but I like to see, did I find them on Facebook or Instagram? Did they have a Google business profile? And then I'll have a little notes column so I can jot down some interesting information that I discovered when I found them. Like we just saw that guy that had the three-star review that uh, they got the reply, but it seemed like he's probably, you know, just two days ago was worried about that. And then I have a status column. Um, I'm, a lead is someone who is just kind of in the, the initial stage, like right now, everybody's gonna be a lead. I haven't really contacted them or anything yet. And then I'll have interest, means they've favorably responded to one of my contacts, but we haven't really booked a call or anything. Call means we've got a call on the calendar, we're gonna talk. Client, they became a client. 
And then if they ex anytime express that they don't want me to talk to them anymore, <laughs> then I'll just say they declined. And then I have three date fields for when I reach out and contact them. And I'll keep track of all of that stuff. Now, the tricky part is how do you find the first name of all these people? But if you can find a first name, it significantly improves the response rate for your outreach. So one way to do that is if you bop back over to the Facebook page, a lot of times if you just kind of scroll down, you'll see people's names. But sometimes you don't. And you can sometimes go to the About page and find names as well. But reviews tends to be a gold mine for finding people's names. Now, this person doesn't have any reviews on here, but if you click through to his website, you can go over to their testimonials and scroll down and you can see that Eddie was exceptional. <laughs> and then you see Eddie's experience. So it looks like this guy's name is Eddie. And um, that's pretty helpful. And then here, here it is, Eduardo, Eddie showed up again. So it's nice to see that we know who we're talking to. And, it's, and you, if you can't find any testimonials on the website, you can sometimes find testimonials or, or reviews on Facebook or on Google. But it's just kind of helpful to know that you can look in testimonials to find the names of people. And then you've got the business name, person's name, email address, all that information stored right here in a spreadsheet. And that'll help you keep track of all your leads. So now we know how to find a lot of leads. So if you want to, you can start building up your lead list now. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the future videos because I'm going to be working on the next one, which is going to be what actually goes into your offer. Now, if you want to get a jump start on that, check out this next video and I'll show you the top five web design services that I feel like are shaping the future of web design. And I back it up with a bunch of stats from like Forbes and stuff. So I think you'll find that one really interesting. I'll see you right there.